Planet 5D readers love behind the scenes. So uh, it's, it's great that we can talk about what it's like from ideation, how it is that you came up with the idea for Photo Factory 360, and then how you went making it happen from the design to the logistics and manufacturing, what pre-work you did in the way of market research, um, if you did any minimum viable products, the, the whole shooting match. So originally we started out doing live event software. So we were gonna actually do like the red carpet thing where you turn people into 360 degree uh, photography. And okay. uh, we're still interested in doing that. But uh, in doing so, we did a small scale rig which um, you know was designed to put an object in, which I put a, a little action figure in to pretend to be a person. So that's where the idea came from. And I realized that, wait a minute, this is uh, perfectly usable in this form for product photography. It's much simpler of a system than, than is currently offered, uh, a much cheaper cost-effective system. So I, uh, you know, we started from there. One of the key things about it is that you need to do a lot of research in your market to know what you're selling and uh, you know, who you're competing against. So when, when the first thing I would advise people if they're doing prototyping is to always investigate everything that's out there, come up with something that's either cheaper and more cost effective for the consumer or has some kind of feature or benefit that is not available elsewhere. We spend a significant amount of time talking to um, you know, people that we know directly that are small business owners. You know, when you're a small business owner, you tend to have a crowd of small business owners around you that you could refer to and bounce ideas off of. You know, so there was a lot of interest right away from it. Uh, and when we started doing research, we realized that the competitors are offering systems for seven thousand dollars, five thousand um, dollars, and that's the reason why you don't see 360 degree photography on small business websites. It's just outside of their reach. So you know, we figured if we can do something that could get it within the reach and make it simple enough where you don't need to be a professional photographer, that you know, we had a winning idea. We started researching different components and, and um, manufacturers of the components, uh, doing some testing with them. You know, basically, it's a trial and error type of thing. You make a couple that don't work, make a couple that work a little <laughs> better, you combine them all together, and then you end up with, with a good product. One thing that's critically important when you're doing um, you know, photography in general is your lighting. And uh, especially in a system like this, when you're trying to completely eliminate the backdrop. So your lighting has to be perfect. And you can't really do that outside of an enclosure like this. As you can see inside the box here, we have the, the turntable, which blends directly into the edgeless backdrop. Four lights total in here, LEDs. Very, very white. I don't know if you can pick up that effect. It's almost like looking into a blinding, you know. It's pretty simple, to be completely honest with you. It, it comes down to um, the software, the cloud hosting, in a really good system like this. It caused no shadows. You almost have to do no processing. Like if you looked at the picture directly after you took the shot, you can't even see that there's, you know, where the turntable ends. And so it's a matter of cropping it, some simple processing, um, and that's about it. So you had the hardware and you had the software. Uh, how many goes, how many iterations before you got hardware that you were comfortable with? And we'll talk about the software separately. Okay, so the hardware, we got pretty pretty lucky. I'm pretty good with uh, specs and prototyping in general. So I um, looked into a bunch of products, decided on two different products, ordered one first, and ended up with the right enclosure box for us. Um, the lighting was right, but not the right amount of light. So we had to you know, um, uh, increase the lighting by adding more lights. But everything that we got from the original shot out was pretty much satisfactory. Uh, the first turntable we got wasn't so good. A little um, sketchy, wasn't, wasn't too smooth. You know, also we wanted it to support more weight. This one could support 25 pounds. So, you know, unless you're putting a, a cinder block inside of it, it's going to pretty much handle it. Actually, I'm thinking a butterball turkey in a microwave, but okay, that's just me. <laughs> How long did it take from first deciding on the design to having hardware that actually would work for you? It took us about four months to do the entire development, to be honest with you. Hardware and software. Yeah, well, the software is not completely done yet. We have most of the components done. It needs to be, um, you know, uh, smoothed together at the at the end. That's kind of why we're doing the crowdfunding and everything. Uh, it's going to blend in seamlessly with our with our cloud hosting service and um, control, you know, pretty much all DSLR, Canon, and Nikon cameras. And you could also import with your point and shoot and um, it controls your smartphone, iOS or Android.
Why did you choose Kickstarter as opposed to any number of other options, whether Indiegogo or bootstrapping, for example? Kickstarter's got a pretty good history. Um, they're kind of geared towards tinkerers and you know the maker movement. That's pretty much what we are. So it seems like a good fit with us. And also the fact that it's pr probably the most popular of the crowdfunding. How much pre-planning uh, have you done for the Kickstarter campaign? What have you learned uh, about preparing the ground for a Kickstarter campaign? You got to assemble a good team. You can't do it by yourself. So if you, unless you want to take, you know, a year or two to do it. So you, most people don't want to do that. They want to, you know, six months maybe to the maximum from start to finish. A key aspect of your Kickstarter is your video. You need to look like you know what you're doing and that you're serious about what you're doing. And the same is true with our media and marketing. Um, a lot of our research and development on like where traffic is coming from into kick other Kickstarters that were successful. You got to get involved. You got to get out there. People need to know, know who you are if you expect to be successful. If we think of your marketing effort uh, for the Kickstarter campaign as the, the classic pie, how mm. much of that pie has gone to which efforts? So you've got an outreach effort to the media. This is part of that. But what else are you doing uh, as you prepare to launch the Kickstarter campaign? And what proportion of those other things consumes your entire focus and budget in the marketing space? Uh, a lot of it is word of mouth also. You know, you got to reach out to family and friends, get them involved in things like thunderclaps, you know, on Twitter and get some, uh, you know, um, your tweets trending. Uh, a lot of timing, you know, you want to time these things out so that they all hit at the same time. These are um, kind of free marketing, but it takes a, lot, a little bit of your time, not so much of your uh, budget. You know, we did some SEO. We had our website up and a lot of our pages up way early, so make sure they get into Google listings. You know, you're not trying to uh, release your Kickstarter, and then all of a sudden you're like, where's my website? It doesn't even come up in a search listing. So all these things are important. So those are um, things that take a lot of time, but not so much budget. A lot of Kickstarters are, are low in funds. That's why the crowd, you know, sourcing. So it's a good idea to do that, that kind of stuff. We didn't do any print media or any kind of paid um, advertising. There is a school of thought that says, wait, guys, don't put an order in with us. Wait until the day that we launch Kickstarter and then throw your orders through that uh, because that generates its own kind of momentum. Have you heard uh, of that kind of approach? Is it something that you've embraced? Yeah, we definitely are embracing that type of approach. We actually aren't offering any pre-sales whatsoever, only through Kickstarter. So right now it's not available whatsoever through any means. How did you come up with the levels of reward? Well, we actually are, are not using too sophisticated of, of a system. You know, we only have about, I think we have three or four tiers. Pretty much as a two dollar, you know, uh, you're just trying to support us. Not really interested in anything. You get yourself on the, um, you know, contributors of innovation a little flyer that we're going to be putting our, our retail packaging. Um, you know, for twenty five dollars, maybe family friends will get a t shirt. But uh, after that, we have one product we're pretty much offering. It's a complete package. It has everything you need to get started. There's nothing extra to buy or or on the side. So we don't really need too many tiers. We may add some stretch goals and things like that during the campaign, but um, if you're interested in doing 360 degree photography, you don't want just a turntable, then you have no backdrop or lighting or, you know, you don't want just software. You want the entire system built for you. You flip a switch, you plug your camera in, a couple minutes later, you know, you, you uh, put the embed code on your website, go to sleep and, and sales start happening for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You remind me of Genie from Aladdin. <laughs> you never know. A lot of the eBay sellers are really interested in, in getting it onto um, eBay, you know, to differentiate their listings from, from other listings. And they'll be using the, the same 360s over and over again if they sell a lot of these products, you know, so they do a couple of them. They could do 20 in a row in an hour and have them all set and ready to go for all the listings. Once this goes live, once the software is generally available, what's required to get it up onto an eBay? Does it require any code to be on the eBay servers? Or does it exist quite independently, just like a JPEG is, is simply a, a It's a little different than a JPEG. It is independent, whereas, whereas it lives on our cloud hosting service. So you don't need to have your own web hosting. It's going to automatically upload, and you're just going to get an embed code that you can put virtually anywhere, except eBay. eBay doesn't allow you to put uh, those type of embed codes directly onto the website. But if you know anything about web development, you know that there's a couple little tricks around that. So we actually are including an embed code specifically for eBay, which will put the first image from the 360, so it's a product image, 
They'll have a label that says click here for 360. It'll open a box and the 360 will spin around inside the box. So it's an embed code that will put a still image with a label that says click here for 360, all done up nice and formatted for you. When they click, it'll open the 360 and they can view it. Very we'd like uh, we'd like eBay to, to adopt the, the 360s, you know, um, natively, but I think we need to get a little more clout before they're going to start listening to us. <laughs> um, immediately after the Kickstarter, when it ends, you want to update your Kickstarter page, t telling people right at the last second because it gets locked like that permanently. That that you, now they should go to your website for pre-orders and for future retail orders, and we'll be all set up. Our, our website will switch like a, a you know like a you know, as I flip the switch, it will, it will turn over to like a retail website taking pre-orders. So you just extend your Kickstarter on basically permanently until, you you know, your first orders come in and then you go into a regular retail operation. So it's definitely priming um, a lot of during the Kickstarter and preparing after the Kickstarter to continue to take those sales. A lot of people have the misconception that, you know, Kickstarter is the kind of thing you just throw up a quick project on there. People start flooding in with money for you. And, uh, you know, then you go on a holiday. It doesn't really work that way. Most of the time that you spend is before the campaign even starts, making it, uh, you know, actually producing your product, figuring out how you're going to produce a lot of your product, not just one of your product, how are you going to get it in the country, the components. There's so much work that needs to be done in advance that people need to really think about that before they just think that it's, uh, you know, something that you're just going to jump into and um, quickly post, a, you know, some kind of video you made in your backyard and everybody's going to throw you a million dollars and it's going to be the end of it. It's yeah. not that kind of a thing. It's just like any other business. You have to convince investors that they want to put their money with you and that they want your product. 